Okay, good morning everybody. Look at this, nice sunshine here in Tokyo. We're just past the time when the sun shines right down the street here. Clock change, I guess, for most of you guys, right? The blue bike is regularly there. It's sometimes in front of my place, it's sometimes in front of the other place. I think it's somebody from the restaurant next door. We see the blue bike all the time. But it could be, now that I think about it, we sometimes see it across the street. So it could be one of the girls that works in a coffee shop across the street. If I was a betting man, that's where I'd bet. Because they open at 7. They've been open for an hour or two, so it makes sense. And I'm not out there before that time, so I don't notice it. It's a blue bike. Okay, it's a nice morning for me. It has been, <laughs> it's been a weekend. When did I see you last? I saw you Saturday morning. I had said I think we had a busy Friday in the shop and then we were not sure how it was gonna go Saturday and Sunday. It's, it's whatever, we're back to way before the pandemic, way before, it's crazy busy, crazy busy. Kawaii-san was here with me yesterday. And if I said there was no time when there was nobody in the shop, that wouldn't be true. Because there was, there was a time early in the morning when there was nobody here. But it was busy all day long. All day long. John says the bins are empty. Not yet. But, but, but. And this is nothing to joke about. At the current rate, we are going to, we're going to make it through November. And then we have a couple of months quiet, hopefully December, January, February. But then for next spring, I have no idea what to think. No idea. No idea. We just can't make things as much as the demand is now coming in for. And all we're hoping is that what we're getting here is a sort of bubble. This is the demand. The people that really, really, really wanted to come to Japan but couldn't for a couple of years, bang, they're here. And we hope it's going to taper off and settle down for a while. You know, the, the people who really want to come have come and then it'll settle back to a normal pattern. I don't know. Someone says, try opening the shop every second day of the week. Whatever, we advertise that. Then instead of coming on six days, they'd come on three. It would help our staffing, but it doesn't help the print production. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> We've been aware of this, actually. I've been on this for half a year or so, more than half a year, nearly a year, when we started to think about what will happen when the shop opens. And we knew we could predict a certain thing, that inside the shop here, we have our own productions. We have uh, the flea market, older goods. And then we have uh, consignment stuff, things that we don't make ourselves, but other publishers make that we're willing to have in our shop. The doi hanga stuff, the Yoshida prints, uh, meyako doi, stuff like that. And those are the ones in highest demand. Absolutely. And we're going to run out of shin hanga, the, the genre that's just shin hanga. Okay, let's get to work. Uh, it's a bit of a different work for you this morning. I'm not sure if you've seen this before. I have the surfer girl is waiting. We have tracing work waiting. Uh, this is going to be the show and tell today. Uh, it's, an, uh, it's a broken eight views. You can think about what eight views it might be. We'll see it at show and tell time. It's three prints from a set of eight views. And it's, don't get confused, it's not all that big. This person has kind of overwrapped it a little bit. Eight views from oh, 150 years ago, somewhere around there. Okay, let's get some work done. And what I have to do first is this. There's a, it, this was on my desk. Uh, Friday night, this was on my desk. And I didn't get it done Saturday because the shop was too busy. And I didn't get it done Sunday because the shop was too busy. So I didn't make the little deadline there. I have missed my deadline. Marcella San is not going to be happy when she comes this morning. So all I can do, I've just got to get it done right now so that it's ready to go and they can take care of it. So what I'm doing is this. And it's not all that much. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20. We've got 24 sets. It's not going to take me long. I have to pack 24 sets of prints into plastic envelopes. This is not deep printmaking work, but uh, it's got to get done this morning. And then we will move on to Surfer Girl. 
A German Twitch streamer was at the front of your shop yesterday evening. Well, he should have banged on the door a bit. I could have come down and said hello. Somebody that I know or, or he knew us or he just randomly walked by. Somebody else could do such a simple thing. Yes, somebody else could do it. Somebody else is all busy with somebody else's job. I'm, I'm the backstop guy. When everybody else is busy and doing, you know, they're all doing important stuff. When everybody else is busy, I'm the backstop. The idea, it was a good idea because we didn't know. We thought really the shop could have been busy, the shop could have been not so busy. So we prepare fill-in work for when the shop, you know, isn't busy. It was a common sense thing to do, to put it to us here, me and Kawaii-san. And if things had been a bit different, we could indeed have done this over the weekend. So it was a good plan from Marcella-san. But, 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 but. The other thing is, and I'll... We have different levels of shop staff here. Some of the people here are kind of new and they don't know how to handle pieces of paper. And this is actually a thing. What I'm going to do here actually is simple, trivial work. But if I just give it to, to you or whatever, whatever, we, we give a piece of paper to somebody and a normal person picks up a piece of paper and may pick it up. And bingo, you've got a destroyed woodblock print just because they held the paper like a normal piece of paper. We're trained, we're trained here. It sounds silly, but we're trained. We pick up pieces of paper with light fingers and we never hold them in a way that the paper's going to get creased or folded. Especially the print staff here, because we're dealing with wet paper all the time. So this isn't just something we can just toss out. If you were here helping me this afternoon, can you do this job? Maybe. Have you got a nice light touch with your fingers? I don't know. Anyway, it'll just be a few minutes. As I said, i got 24 of them to do, then we'll get up to the real work. And demand exceeding supply. Yes, yes, it's an upside down world. Yeah, no idea. Dave the Carver become Dave the Printer? Well, not on a full-time basis, for sure, no. Not on a full-time basis. I know. There's a, there's a, we need printers desperately, but having Dave try and fill in for that work really wouldn't be productive in any way. And the reason being, it's not easy to do printing, printing as a start and stop job. And because I have so many different things to do, it's not in any way feasible for me to try doing printing as well. You've seen me here. I can do carving, turn around, do something else, do some carving, turn around, do something else. But I can't do that on the printing. So it really doesn't make any sense for me to think about getting some paper wet and trying to join the printing crew. These are the, what month is it? I forget. This was the June? No. May? These are the May prints from our current series. And this is back number printing. We've already gone through the first 300 copies of these. And now there's another batch of 100 each coming up. We're working through the set again, month by month by month, so that we are ready for new subscriptions. When we get to the end of this year, next month or later this month when we're announcing the new series for next year we also want to be announced that this set is available again and we've had 300 subscribers for it and what we've done now is we're going through the set and the Chiharu-san and Kubota-san they are printing 100 copies of each of these things 
so that we can have them available again for new subscribers. Why do I put them in a small bag? Well, I can't just send them loose. They've got to be packaged for, for delivery to the customers. I'm not quite sure how to answer that. But of course, I can't just send them to the customer like this. Here's some prints. We have to package them. These are so nicely done. You know, this group was carved by John San, Chung San, and this particular group was printed by uh, Kawai San out in Nagano. She's got a dream life, you know. She lives out in the countryside in Nagano somewhere, in a nice little house in a rural environment. Lives there with her child, young son. We send her work. She does it, and we send her work that basically has never any deadlines. It's never a case of, got to be done by Monday, you know. There's no deadline on this whatsoever. We're catching up, catching up, catching up. And she sits there and prints at her own schedule in her own home, commuting time zero. The box of blocks arrives, the sample arrives. She goes through the work and does it on her own schedule. When it's done, she sends it back to us. The check is in the mail. She gets paid very well for the job. We don't yell and scream at her. It's a perfect job for her, absolutely perfect. Paper is out. Thanks for reminding me something. Sorry, there's uh, three packs of paper out. Upstairs was dead quiet over the weekend. Today, there are three printers working up there. Uh, Ishikawa-san and Suga-san are working on the batches of the November prints. The first batch of November subscription prints has already been posted. It's in the mail to the subscribers. Some people have already perhaps received it. And Ishikawa-san is working on the second batch, due on November 11th. And Suga-san is working on the third batch, due November the 21st. And then Ayumi-san is up there. She's finished her test printing of the Matsushima print. We saw that, the show. I showed it to you the other day. She's finished her Matsushima test printing. And she is now moving on to... What is she doing this morning? She's doing a new postcard size print that we're publishing later this month never stops never stops we have a new print coming out later this month another small hasui reproduction how did most of your printers learn their trade apprenticeship self-taught the people we've got here let's see well Kubota-san and Chiharu-san and Yamamoto-san the three printers who are who outside printers who work for us on, a, on a, an informal contract basis they're all ex Adachi printers Kubota-san spent decades at Adachi Chiharu-san spent some time at Adachi I think before she found it kind of too abusive I don't know the details there and she left so she, those guys are trained at Adachi. The in-house printers we have, Ishikawa-san and Ayumi-san, they trained here. They also spent some time with my friend Asaka Motoharu, who uh, they were there to learn carving. And they wanted to learn printing, so he sent them over here, and uh, that's it. They never went back. We kept them and trained them here. So Ayumi-san and Ishikawa-san and Beichan, they trained here. Sugisan, who also works upstairs, she also is Adachi. She's ex Adachi. She worked there, then quit again because she didn't find it any kind of a congenial environment. She went off to be a. She did shiatsu massage for a bunch of years. Then I forget how she heard about us, wanted to do more printing, but wanted to do so in a less stressful environment. So she's back here. Are we going to have that Matsuri this week, or do I remember wrong? You mean our flea market Matsuri, we're in the last couple of days of preparation. I don't know what day we are going to launch. It could be Wednesday, it could be Thursday, it could be Friday. I'm not sure. The idea is to get it done later this week. It won't happen today or tomorrow. And we will be launching, I'm not sure... 
in previous years, we did our Matsuri and we launched it stage by stage by stage, and it really didn't work. I got so much hassle from people who weren't able to be there at the right time. So this year, we're just going to launch it all together, and it will be done probably, um, probably seven o'clock Japan time one morning. We'll we'll talk about it first. We'll uh, we'll send the flyer out, the email out. I don't know. We're still discussing it. Okay, just a few more left here, then we'll get through to some carving work. Thanks for your patience this morning while I get this done. Ayana-san will be here at 9 o'clock. She'll be poking her nose in the door and she can give us a report on what she did on her holiday weekend. But then she's got to get upstairs because she's going to be one busy camper this morning. She's been off for four days and there's so many orders. <laughs> so many orders. Also, too, what's happening? We get online orders, of course, but a great many people who do shopping in the shop here over the past few days, well, always, a great many people ask us to ship it on for them. So they do their shopping here, pick it up, take it to the counter, pay for it and say, oh, by the way, here's my address. Bang, send it, please. And that stuff is waiting upstairs in a stack. All the prints that we, that we came out of the shop over the weekend waiting to be shipped. People these days, they're traveling with small backpacks. They do not want to carry around a bunch of wood bought prints. Someone's asking for time. Does, does, does our robot have something about time? Are you trying to figure out what time it is? Here in Japan right now, it's 8.17 Monday morning, if that's what you're asking about time. It's 8.17 Monday morning, November the 7th is the time in Japan right now, if that's what you're trying to find out with that command. Maybe we need a bot command for that? I don't know. Oh, that reminds me also, the last stream. You guys were playing around and I didn't get it. I didn't get it. It's, what was it? It was uh, nine o'clock on a Saturday. <laughs> and I may have seen the first reference. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday. The regular crowd shuffles in. But then you guys went to town with it and I missed all that stuff. I missed all the references. So uh, I didn't get to play. But I saw them when I read the, uh, when I read the chat at lunchtime <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> it seems we had a Billy Joel stream and I didn't, uh, I didn't catch it. New set of lyrics. <laughs> no, after the Boston song, we, I, I brought it up by talking about the Boston song, and then I don't know if you got it, you guys went to town, and uh, you guys went to town and came up with, uh, I don't think it's a full set of lyrics, but it was a bunch more lyrics for a piano man, so. <laughs> oh, they're all mixed, some are upside down, some are right side up. Also, too, I know it turned out, I had mentioned hearing that Boston song covered by a string quartet in the 7-Eleven, and then somebody actually found the link to the thing on YouTube. So I got a chance to hear the whole thing properly. So thank you very much for all those people. I didn't, I didn't uh, even catch any of those things. You know. Here's the other set. This is set number uh, two. This is the February set, the one I just did a minute ago. This is the uh, May set. This is the February set of prints, and this is the second edition. This is Jiharu-san's edition. So, sing me a song, I'm the printer man. I don't know who it was. <laughs> Thank you for all the help you gave. 
<laughs> it was fun. We should, we should do this. There's Sugisan coming in with a big, full, heavy bag. What is she bringing with her? She's moving in. Yes, these are subscription prints. I, know, I, I was supposed to do this over the weekend because these are needed in Ome. They were needed in Ome today, apparently. I guess they've got some back numbers to ship, and I missed this. What I'm doing here is the last stage in print production of some of this year's subscription series. I carved the blocks to these on this stream. It would have been a year ago right now, back last November. I must have been carving this set here. This is a set of prints for our, our subscription series for this year. And I carved the blocks for them here on the stream. And what's happening now is our printers are still working, making batches of these. And that's what we're seeing now. This would have been one woodblock print, and they've been chopped up. Has the shop had a resurgence of tourist traffic? It has been berserk. Well, not berserk. Berserk is like chaos and we can't handle it. It has been busy. Let's just simply say it's been busy. And we have our, our minimum, you know, the spreadsheet we've got with the rent and the staff costs and the cost of the different types of prints. Way back when, 2014, when we opened this shop, we built a master spreadsheet of what it costs to run this shop. And first it was upstairs, the second floor, then it was at the third floor, now the first floor. And the spreadsheet that runs the first floor here, what we pay for rent to run the shop, not to run our workshop upstairs, not for the storage, not for the office, but for the store, the shop part of our building. The rent to cover two part-time employees, to cover the, the insurance, to cover the uh, energy costs, the light and all that kind of stuff for the air conditioning, whatever and the, the uh, incremental costs. To, to run for the first floor, we need a sales level of 100,000 yen. This is, this is it's a nice flat round number, but it's around that. I can't tell you exactly what it is because the different types of prints we sell have different margins. So given a random mix of sales in the shop, we need a gross sale of 100,000 yen per day, six days a week, to make this shop break even. And for the past two and a half years, that 100,000 yen has been zero. So we have essentially, well, I can't say lost, but yes, we have been uh, uh, underwater. We didn't lose 100,000 yen because we didn't pay for staff. There was no staff here. They were gone. It was just rent and stuff. But now that we're back up and running, we need 100,000 yen per day. This is a saksa. Rent, people, costs. We're paying much more now for labor than we did before. And we need 100,000 yen to break even. And the last, uh, since we've uh, opened, we haven't hit it every day, but the last few days we've doubled and sometimes tripled that. So yes, if this keeps up, we are back to normal. And Asakusa, we saw in spring we're up and summer we're down, autumn we're up and winter we're down. So we, in winter and in midsummer, we never get anywhere near our minimum. But it doesn't matter when you've got a business. You can't calculate profitability on a day-by-day -day basis. You calculate profitability over a, over a financial term, you know, in our case, a year. So year on year, this shop was profitable, and we think it will come back. But yeah, 100,000 yen, you know. Okay, two left, and we'll get some work done. Oh, someone is building a time, are they? <laughs> Have we built that? Is it a thing? Koringami, what's this? 
did you build this in the background right now, or did somebody who else, who somebody come in and built this? Corning Gummy's building it. Okay, eggs, eggs, eggs. That that deserves a nice big chocolate egg. So, <laughs> local time in Tokyo is November seventh, twenty twenty-two, eight twenty-five a.m. JST GMT plus. <laughs> Over the top. All right, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bot commands while you wait. How much do I have to pay these guys now? He's gonna, he's gonna want to raise. <laughs> Very nice job, sir. Very nice. <laughs> I man the bot commands. John is emote police. <laughs> the rest. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, Karen, Karen, Karen. Karen sent me an email the other day with an information about uh, about an interview. Karen, are you going to tell us about this? Give us a link. Give us some some information. Is Karen here this morning, or is she off? I don't see her name. Karen is here. Yes, yes, yes. Karen, yes. I don't know. Can you let us know about the the interview thing? Have we got dates, times? Is it online? Silence. Maybe she's getting some information ready for us. I'm not sure how much is public and how much is not available. So that's why that's why I'm being uh, no, that's why I'm being cagey here. I'm not sure how much is public. Is this still secret? Not yet means not yet means it's still secret or or it's just simply not online yet. Okay. Anyway, from my point of view, please, when you're ready, let us know. There are hundreds of people here who are interested. Okay, there we go. Work done. Thanks for your patience, guys, while I did this. Oh, right there. I understand it's going to step on it. I can't put it there. Where can I put it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Where can I put it? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Times it, 8.28. Okay, good. We can actually get some real work done. Okay, you know what's coming up. Those of you who have been here for a while know what's coming up. The Surfer Girl project is moving forward slowly but steadily, mostly slowly, not very steadily. We carved a while back the first base tone for the colors. Those of you who don't know what's going on here, it's a reproduction of Okada-san, Okada Yoshio's Surfer Girl. This is a, a photocopy from the uh, original version in 1974, 1975. Don't know the exact date. We're making a family authorized reproduction. Okada-san is dead, but his nephew is holding his copyrights, and we are, have an author authority, we have the license to make a reproduction of this print. 
the color blocks, there's going to be a bunch of color blocks. One of them you can see here, it's for the base blue tone for the entire surf tunnel, the water and the tunnel around the girl. When you look up more closely, you learn that the blue is in multi-tones. There's different levels of tone on the blue. And e easily speaking, it breaks down into four levels. There's a lighter, you can sort of see two of them here. There's a lighter tone in the corner. It, at this point, moves to a darker tone, moves back to the lighter tone. The darker one comes up. So when you speak of it in numbers, level one, level two, back to level one, and there is level three and level four. It doesn't dial up to 10. It has four different levels. And what we've done so far is this is level, I got it right. This is level one, which is everything. Then to make level two, I've carved just the areas that are level two. And these will print on top of level one. And it may even actually be sort of the same color as level one, but it will double up to make level two. Then we have two more blocks standing by here. And this will be the block for level three. And I have to identify the places that are going to be level three mark them with my little marker, and then cut away everything else. When that's done, I'll flip it over and we'll do the same thing. Identify the spots that will be just level four. So my job today, and with your help actually, because every time I do this, it turns out that I do tend to miss little places. My job today is to identify the places that are level three. Now, this is not going to be actually trivial. But let's have a start. Two. We came up from here. Oh, I see. Actually, there's a place two I didn't cut yet on this one. I haven't cut that. That was level two, two, two. One, two, three. Then it went back to one. It went two, 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 three. There's the first level three. Show you just a minute. Let me let me get a rough rough hit at this first. Then I will put them side by side so you can see them and help me. Just let me get a rough hit here.
Okay, let me turn this around, blow it up here so you can perhaps get a chance to see this. One sec. There are two tones on the hairs as well. There's an undertone and an overtone on the hair. Okay, let me try and find a place where we can zoom in. One sec, please. Okay, if I... Okay, what we've got here, this is the first instance of level three. These were level twos. There's a level one still left there. So this was two, two, two. There's the first instance of level three, and it continues out here. And I've got that now. Here, level three. I, I think of this, and this is Michigan. It sort of sticks up into Canada there, whatever. That's level three here and there. Then this triangle also is level three. These are number two, three, two, two, three, I'm thinking. So we have the triangles here. The triangle is three, back to two, back to two, up to three. That's this triangle. Then we clearly have a two. So that's out of the way here, a two. Then we have a group all together. I believe this is three, three, three. This whole little swirly bit is three, and this one in the middle, this thin group here now, one, two, three. These are level four. This thin group, these are level four. It then goes back to level three, but there's a bit to catch at the back here. So level three, there's a small triangle and a piece and a longer piece. Small triangle, a piece, and a longer piece, which actually sticks up. This one sticks up into its neighboring zone. Then there's a four and a four, and then we have two, again, level three, before going back to the dark level four. We have two again here, three, before going back to the dark level four. And it's four all the way round, these are all the same. It's four all the way around until we have one lighter one here. I don't know if you can see it. That's a four, 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 three, four, four. You see the difference on the screen there. They look really, really similar, but they are different. That one's a three, and we have it here. So I think now the under curl, I've got all the under curl, the level three. We now, there's no, there's no level threes up in the top here. And there's no level threes down in the bottom corner. But over in the right corner, we do have some more level threes. And I've got to try and find these. And these are going to be tough to identify. This is tough. This was level one, one. That came down to a two. This must be at the tip of the surfboard. This is our first level three. You can see it coming down. This is level one. We have a level two here. We have a three. It goes back to two. It goes to four. You can see the difference. So level three, the one at the tip of the surfboard, is our first one. Someone's saying, couldn't we identify these in Photoshop? Well, we don't, you know, we don't actually have a Photoshop file. All we have is this photograph. And I could take it into Photoshop and try and do the spoit, the color picker. But some of these actually are, don't match like that. Because what's level two over on one side is the same as level three over at the other side. It's local. So we have three, two, three. Long one is three. This one is three. I could have got some help from Photoshop, yes, absolutely. It would have helped, perhaps, unless it didn't. That's four, and that's three. And then 
these in the corner. I have no idea. They're four or three. I can't tell. That's three. That's four. That's two. What are these top ones? I'm going to call them three. Then going around the bottom of the surfboard. Someone says off camera. Am I off camera? Off camera? Off camera. Coming around the surfboard, it's three, two, four. The long one is four. We have four. We have four. This one, this globular thing, must be a three. Around the board, they're all fours. At the bottom, it's a four, it's a four. This small one is a three. Then going back out, the corner one is a four, and the one above it, the corner one is a deep four, and above it is a three, and then above that's a two. So this is our three. And above that, it's a two. And did I get it on the two block? Yes, indeed, I did. I got it on. Wait, where are we? Two. It's upside down. Two. Here we are. And yes, I did get that on the two block. Yes. And there's one more. This little one also is a three. That's a four, and that's a two. Yes, got it, got it, got it, check. Okay. I think we're good to go. Someone says there's one at the bottom left, bottom left, bottom left. The main big one here at the bottom left is all four. That's four. It's four, four, four. It's fours all the way down along the bottom. There's a three right here, which I've got. There's a three beside it and a three beside that, which I've got and I've got. There's a two, which I don't have, and there's a three here and a four and a three here, which I've got both of those. There's a four here, there's a three at the tip of the surfboard, I've got that, it's followed by a two and a four. Two I don't have and a four I do have. That's a four, that's a four. We are done. Oh, there is one more over here. It's really not clear what this one is. I didn't do it on two, so it's going to go on three. This one has to fill in here. We are good to go. Left on the print and right on the wood. Left on the print. There are no threes in the bottom corner here. There are ones and a two. And this two, we've carved this already onto the two block. We got that on two. And everything else in that corner we have on one. And we talked about that before, actually. We're probably going to put a gradation in this to mix it up a little bit. But this is one, one, and two. I see no threes here at all. I could be convinced that this one is a three, now that I think about it. I could be talked into that. Under the surfboard, we have a four here, 
and then we have the one two group and I could be convinced that that's a three so let's do that let's put that middle line on as a three No, two down from the last one I marked here. One, two down. That's a two. It's on the two and it's already carved. It's already done. All right, so there's just that last one. Let's put that in here. The last one here. And that will do us. There we go. Ready to start carving. Since I mark the colors each time from the photocopy, there could be a blob, which is, if I make a mistake, there's two kinds of mistakes here. What I could do is I could end up with one area on both blocks. Say if I carve it onto the three, and then next week when I'm doing the four, I put it on the four, that would end up with color number five. There would be two ways to fix this. One is to leave it and have color number five, and one is to take it off one of those two blocks, bringing it back to three or four. So carving too much, that's, that's a fixable mistake. The mistake that I can't easily fix is if I forget one zone. And here I'm going to clear away all the wood that I don't need. So I've cleared away something that should be here, that's more difficult to fix. And that's when we get plug time, putting in a plug. So uh, we've done this many, many, many times when I'm doing these places where if I'm in doubt, I will put it on both blocks. You've heard me do this many, many times. If in doubt, put it on both blocks, run your test printing, make your decision, cut it off the one that you don't need. Now we won't do five, you know, of course. If I do that mistake and have something on double blocks, we will simply uh, cut it off the correct one. We're going to try and make this as close as possible to the... Uh, to the real one. Okay, let's get carving. What time is it? 8.47. Okay, we've got uh, 15 or so or 20 minutes of carving and then we move on to show and tell. Ouch. We're still good. We're still good to go here. I just sharpened it yesterday. I was doing surgery yesterday, great wave surgery, that batch of 60 great wave prints that you saw go through here the other day. I did the surgery on them, and it actually was pretty good. I only lost about three, three or four I lost. The rest have gone through. <laughs> Some doctor, eh? I did 60 surgeries yesterday. I only lost three people, you know. Why did I test on my finger here? Yeah, because I can't reach yours. Is that the, is that the answer? I was a base if I were a baseball player. <laughs> so those guys have tough odds, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's good. A surgeon in court, baseball player in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that would make a good uh, that would make a good web page a, a good fun web page different professions at different percentages of success you know if you build airplanes and you're 99% successful <laughs> you're going to spend all your time in court you know, of course <laughs> Actually, that would be interesting to see different professions, what their what their rate is, you know. So, it also makes you realize, you know, the people that do build airplanes and that fly airplanes and plane engines and pilots and whatever people involved with aviation, you know, it really does, you know, bring home to you how different that is from everything else. You know, the people that build airplanes versus the people that build cars and the whole environment of flying versus driving. It's astonishing when you think about it that they can reach such incredible, incredible levels of, uh, of accomplishment, of efficiency, of safety. You would never have believed it, you know. If, like, if the idea of commercial aviation was just being invented now, hey, I've got this idea, we've, we've invented this thing called a plane, we're going to you know, get in it and fly around the sky. Nobody would think it would be possible because it would never be thought that you could ever achieve the requisite level of safety. We can't get to 99% for complicated machines like that. And of course, not only 99%, we're way, 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 way past 99%. You know, 99% wouldn't be enough. How many thousands of flights are there uh, running around the planet today? You know, and if that was being projected as something, hey, let's try this. I think we can make it work. You'd have been laughed out of the room. You know. So same thing is the same kind of thing. If motorcycles were just invented, so think how expensive driving would be if you had the same safety rate. Of course. So all these things. You know. If you had proposed this to me, we've got these things called airplanes and we're going to get in them and fly them and build engines and then, you know, I would have said, you've got to be kidding. You can never, ever, ever make that safe enough. I mean, the people that fly on the rockets that go up to the space station, what's their margin? Or we don't know the numbers, but uh, those guys are taking a pretty hairy chance, of course, you know. If I won, uh, you know, a, a SpaceX lottery or something, and I got a phone call today from SpaceX saying, hey, you've been selected as the civilian rider for the next trip to the space station, you know, come on over, get yourself packed, we'll pay your expenses, come on over, you're going up to the space station. If I got such an imaginary phone call, if that came today, I really have to say I'm sorry, I, do, I wouldn't take it actually. I wouldn't take it. It would be a, an astonishing thing to do. I would love to actually do that thing to sit in one of those things and, and hear the candle light and get up there. I think I could, I could handle it. But I think I'd rather, I think I'd say no. Because to me, the margin is still, uh, the safety margin is still not where I, I feel, would feel like I want it. Worth the, worth the experience. You know? Maybe it's different. Maybe if I was 80, if I were 80, or if I, if I didn't feel I had much time left or something. I don't know. I won't take it, but I know this guy in Tennessee. So you would, you would, you'd, you'd take the gamble, would you, John? I guess so. I couldn't, I couldn't criticize it. It would be an incredible, astonishing, life-changing experience. And what is the risk? I don't know. We don't know. There's not enough uh, in a heartbeat. Yeah, it's funny. But yet I'm sitting here hesitating. I really would love to do that. But I'm personally thinking that the risk is still too high. Interesting. It'd make for a great headline either way. And it would be a cool way to go, honestly speaking. Now that, now that I think about it a bit more, 
I'm seven, 71 in a couple of days. I'm 71. I really had a fabulous life. I've done a whole bunch of stuff. There, there's no reason I could, I, I need more time to get more stuff done. It would be silly to say that. So when you think about it, actually, if it did, if the candle did blow up, I wouldn't even know. The death would be fast. It might not be a bad way to end my life, you know, instead of getting sick and getting cancer and all that stuff. So let me think about this for a while. If the phone call comes today, uh, let, me, let me have a couple of minutes to think about it. Yeah, died of cancer, blew up in space. No, I get you, I get you, I get you. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> I get you. I get you. Let me think about this, because maybe actually too, maybe, maybe. Maybe. John, don't book it just yet. Let me, maybe that spot is still mine. Let me think about this. <laughs> I don't know. Now somebody's going to give up. If I had a phone here, someone would make a prank call. Hey, Dave, this is Elon calling. <laughs> we need a prank call right now, but I don't have a phone here, so. <laughs> but there could be, if the candle goes, that's one way to go, but it could, you know, throw you into a bad orbit and you're out there in orbit and you can't get back down and the oxygen's running out. That's not a fu such a fun way to go. You're still alive in the capsule, but it's unrecoverable, or it goes out of orbit or something. That might be not so much fun. Do they carry such pills? I don't know. Do they carry cyanide capsules? I, I wouldn't think so. I wonder. The four, the four astronauts in the, uh, in the escaped capsule drew straws today to see who would be the first to be cannibalized. <laughs> They're that hungry. Four people getting very, very hungry <laughs> in a capsule. I guess it wouldn't be food. It would be oxygen, I suppose. That would be <laughs> the first thing. I don't know. Now when there's 7,534 the orbit, Waiting for the rescue team, the, the, the four astronauts drew straws to see who would be the, on the menu. It's science fiction. I read such stories, you know, Asimov and Heinlein, and those guys, they wrote such stories ad infinitum back in the 1950s, you know, been there, read that. I mean, we all felt that, you know, when Armstrong went down on the moon, you know, in 1969, they made that landing, and it was a touch-and-go landing, you know, it wasn't all perfect, and it's quite possible that if Armstrong had lowered that thing and they'd hit a rock and one leg buckles, the lunar lander could have, you know, landed and not been able to take off again. And there was no plan B, there was no other team that could have gone up to the moon to rescue them. If that lander had been uh, incapacitated, Armstrong and Aldrin would have been sitting there on the moon and with no way to get home and maybe still still calms communication with Earth. Hi guys, hey we have a problem here. The leg is the, the lander leg is buckled and we can't uh, take off. And I guess they must have planned for that eventuality. Maybe they did carry pills or just man it out. I mean, you know, they got the right stuff. They must have prepared for that. First man on the moon, first man to die on the moon. You know, it, it clearly could have happened. Oh, is it Ayano time? Twelve seconds early. Good morning, Ayano-san. Good morning, Ayano-san. 
She's been away for four days, so she says, Isashiburi, it's been a long time. <laughs> Come and say hello. Oh, you get drunk in the way? Sorry. They don't understand you. You have to say, <laughs> you'll have to. <laughs> the Aomori, trip to Aomori was a bit pretty. Can't great. Say yeah. Some part of Aomori, you can still see. Okay, like tutu, tutu. The lady went up north to the Tohoku Peninsula, to Aomori Prefecture. She was off for four days to show. Four days. I mean, Thursday was a national holiday. She stole out of here for Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday is a weekend. Right. Aomori. Aomori. But you, did, you said you weren't going skiing or anything. I no. wasn't going skiing. But um, some part of Aomori, you can still see autumn leaves, like a beautiful yellow, red, orange, mm, all the mm, colors. Mm, mm, mm. But if you go up mountains, like some mountains in mm. Aomori, it's already it's snowing snow, yeah. a lot. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It was like up to my knees. Yeah, yeah. So are the ski resorts open or not yet? I guess not yet. From like end of November, probably. Okay. Probably. Okay. But yeah, it okay. wasn't enough for skiing. Mm. But mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. the uh, ryokan, the hotel I stayed at, uh, there was no electricity, no signal. There was only. Uh, no electricity? No electricity. It's in that far in the mountains, you mean? They didn't run a generator? Yeah, what do you mean? Like I guess they have a little bit of electricity, but it's like really weak because it's in the, in the middle of the mountain. Well, how are they cooking and stuff? I mean, well, they use gas. Yes, but uh, so there's no lights in the place? No lights. So there are only lanterns and lamps. Okay, so what about yourself? There's no cell phone connection. Mm, no, so she's no, been no. off grid, I see, I see, <laughs> off grid for a while. It's a retreat from you. <coughs> Did your hands start to shake or? or I, don't, I don't think so. I really enjoyed it because, you know, just lantern, I think it was like too dark for like just, just having one lantern in one mm. room is mm. not, wasn't enough. But once you get used to the darkness, mm. Mm. your eyes get used to it and you mm. can see more. So it was like really, really warm. Interesting. I, I can relate to this story because the the my my not my parents my kids mothers Japanese mothers parents lived in the mountains no electricity no gas no nothing yeah. and we spent every summer up there nice. so we spent every August in a place that was just like this no electricity no gas <laughs> it's, it's literally it's cooking for cooking and cooking on a fire of course, you know, fire. Of, course okay, of course, okay, of course. Okay. That's normal, you know. So, cool. so, so, but I wouldn't expect that to still be available. No, right, 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 right. I guess I, that Ryokan place chose to not to have. Oh, so this is the charm point. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, well, how do you make a booking? Well, what, whatever. They have, yeah, like they have said, a website. Like said, yeah, like a <laughs> website. Bit of electricity, okay. not running the whole, uh, <laughs> yeah. the whole building, yeah, but maybe yeah, like yeah, just yeah. computer yeah. or something. Okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, it was cool. really cool. 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 Hi, uh, I, have you got? Are you going to do something on our Insta this week? What? What? It, let's do an Insta post. Have you got a photograph? Oh. Yeah, I did. But is it okay? Let's do this. Yeah, it's Mokong and Instagram. Well. This will be fine, right? If you, I don't mean deep private stuff, but if you just post a picture of the mountain place where you were and say, "Hi, this is Ayano. I've spent the last four days away from Mokohankan up in the mountains." That's cool. That's okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. I can Le see some. It's okay for our Instagram to show. Of, um, autumn leaves and snowy mountain. Yeah. But people are saying, yes, yes, yes. Love <laughs> to see that. Great to see. Sounds fun. Do it. Okay. Get a little slideshow, three or four or five pictures. If you're okay with this. I'm okay. And I'm well. Do it. Happy. Do it. Okay. Do okay. it before the end of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Caption check again. You must go. Okay, 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 okay. All right. But thank you for uh, the long holiday. Okay. Um, well, nothing. What do you mean? Thank you. <laughs> this. This, that's Japanese, look at that. The Thursday was a, a holiday, so she is legally not supposed to be here. Friday, she took a holiday, meaning she has 10 days each year, and she chose to take one of them on Friday. Saturday and Sunday, she's normally off, and she's apologizing. <laughs> she's saying thank you to me for letting her have a holiday. <laughs> I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. For, for, for these people, they're like, you know, of course, you know, of course. Of course. But, um, you know, somebody has to cover. I, I, know, I covered. I, what number seven and I did it on Friday. We got in some trouble. She may not be so happy once she sees what happened on Friday. Because me and Wat Nabisan covered her work on Thursday and Friday. But because Ayano san's been doing it by herself now for like five or six months, we who used to do that job have forgotten how to do it. And on uh, Friday, whatever. Well, let's talk about it later. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, the, who wrote that software anyway? It's so <laughs> awkward to use. <laughs> so Maybe I should have tested the, the, the income No, in you go, in you go, in you go. I know there is some mail that, I mean, I answered most of the mail. I processed the orders. I, we didn't, anything with the post office closed, of course. Right, right. So that job's waiting. And I didn't do anything from last night. So whatever orders <laughs> came in last night, I didn't uh, okay. process those yet. And there's a bunch of stuff you're going to see 
of, I don't even know, 10, 11, 12. Uh, yeah, the I memos sold in the shop, out of stock, call the supplier. Right. There's mm -hmm. a ton of those. You know, this, I will be coming tomorrow, but I will come Don't wait. Yeah, to call her now so she can yeah. bring them tomorrow. And as far as doi goes, talk to Aoyama-san to get something mm -hmm. cooking with doi san yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will go for Okay. The, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. okay. So sorry about the interruption to our normal work, but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. What have you bozos done? Yeah, it's not that bad, but uh, we did, what we did was we processed a bunch of orders and we did them, whatever, I made a mistake, and uh, we had to roll them back and try again. Somebody's out there on the camera. But this was, it's, what's the expression, eating your own dog food? I'm a program, I built all the systems here, and I build them with feedback from the people working. And I build a system, put it in, it doesn't work, we fix, we patch, we change it. But then I understand it's been using my software now, and I've just, it's out of my mind, you know, it's done. It's gone, fixed, ready to go. And Dave parachutes in on Friday to do her job, and that really, it's no joke, who wrote this damn stuff, you know, because coming in fresh to see software, it's really, really uh, enlightening and uh, eye-opening for a programmer to see this. You know. Yes, yeah, Sapphire, you're talking about the moon landing speech, Sapphire speech, he's famous for that. That's one of his uh, major accomplishments. I have it at home. Uh, the guy's name was William Sapphire. He wrote the speech for Nixon. It, it leaked in subsequent years. It is an excellent speech. It's a bit hard when you think about Nixon delivering it, but whatever. Can't be helped. No one writes bad code like the past self. <laughs> Is that a thing? Because I can certainly believe that. Absolutely, I can believe that. You know. No, it's not all that bad. I'm not really trying to insult myself too too badly. Remember, there's sort of a, there's a bit of a paradox here with the code. I'm not writing code that's going into a package to sell. We're writing code for us to use here, in-house code, and we know we are trained to use it. So sometimes you will see the screen, there will not be an overflow of instructions because you know we know what to do, Yamada-san learns what to do in this case, and we use the software. But a stranger parachuting in to use the software, sometimes it's not clear what to do because not every button is labeled. And we have some of those, if you click on the second, if you click on the guy's last name, it does something. If you click on the guy's first name, it does something else. You know, convenient little shortcuts in the software that would never be of any meaning in commercial software. So when you build your own stuff, you build in your own little tips and tricks, but the screen doesn't tell you what to do because we all know what to do. And that's what's happened here. She knows how to use this, and that very thing, you, to get to a certain place, you have to click on the customer's last name, not the first name. It's just a little quirky thing we built in. You would never do that in commercial software, but you can build it when you're doing it for yourself. And Dave, not having used that software for, you know, five or six months, isn't on top of these things. They're documented, they're in the manual, they're in the code, if we went to look inside the code, there's an explanation in the commenting. But simply as a user sitting down at the machine, I didn't remember what to do. So it's not actually that I'm a turkey, that the, the, the programs are bad programs, it's that they are, uh, what's the word? They are very personal programs. <coughs> so I shouldn't be too hard on myself, you know. The, the, the things are, in general, clean, attractive, easy to understand. Where I got in trouble on Friday, was with stuff that I had forgotten how to use and that isn't clear to a new user. So I shouldn't be too hard on myself uh, as a programmer. But yeah, not very tasty dog food.
That thing with the last name we're talking about, what we're talking about there is a shortcut. The, the program has its regular flow. If you want to move to a different customer, you go to the, you know, the search and blah, blah, blah. But we built in some shortcuts. We found after the system went in place that there were certain things that the users were doing all the time that I hadn't specifically foreseen when I was designing the workflow. So rather than go back and rebuild the whole program, when I saw what they were trying to do, they were trying to get, I had gone from A to B to C to D. And they were trying to go directly from A to D, and it was going along D2 around B and C. So we started to patch in some shortcuts when you're on screen A to get directly to screen D. So this is the thing, clicking on the last name took them directly to screen D instead of having to go around the, the regular route through screens B and C. So as I said, it, 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 it's not something you could build into software that you were selling. But we can, you can uh, create shortcuts and that's where I got in trouble because I didn't know these, couldn't remember what to do and I made some mistakes in the workflow. Well, I'm pretty proud of our system. I'm not, uh, I'm not embarrassed about it at all. It's extremely functional. It's to die for. And if we had tried to commission this outside, it would have cost us an absolute freaking fortune, both in capital and in maintenance. And Three minutes to show and tell. Yeah, thank you, thank you. The show and tell today is, uh, there's only three woodbot prints in there, so there's no, uh, it's not going to take a huge long time. Your socks are safe. These are quiet. They're, they're interesting prints. There's something very interesting about them, but they're not uh, dramatically glorious or something like this. So. I said the prints in today's show and tell were eight views. Anybody got any guesses? What kind of eight views? Whose eight views? quite sure is that the blue garbage man from the Korean restaurant because if there is there's news about it when he was here the other day he was not in his blue beat-up truck he was in he just had a, 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 a flat bed he came and drove up in a white truck got out put the garbage threw it over the gate into the into the white truck and for a couple of days he did that I don't know if we saw it on the on the stream the other day you might have seen it without me noticing it Anyway, he's got a new garbage truck. Yesterday I saw him, yesterday, day before, I can't remember, I saw him. It's the same guy getting the same garbage from the Korean hot dog place, and it's the same blue color, but it is a brand new, spanking clean, gloriously quiet garbage truck. That was days of him pulling into the curb and doing that clutch sound while he fires it up. They're gone. He's got a new garbage truck. It looks just like the old garbage truck, but whatever, it's, it's, it's new. I would guess that the garbage business is pretty good, stable business, I guess, I don't know. Look at that color, ooh. Takes a minute for the camera to change colors. Anyway, show and tell.
And again, great disappointment, no green tape. No green tape, yeah, the clutch broke. <laughs> he finally broke his clutch, possibly, I don't know. <laughs> I think John and I will disagree on that point to the end of time, you know. He thinks the guy's bad on the clutch, and I think it was the, the garbage gear getting clutched into play, <laughs> but I don't know. It sounded like a guy who didn't know how to use his clutch. But <laughs> And I haven't heard a clutch sound with a new truck. We'll have to we'll have to keep an ear on it. And that's him. Does that sound like a new garbage truck? I don't know. Okay, protect your ears. We're going to peel off some tape. I noticed I got static for this the other day. I peeled off tape on a package, and I guess it made too much noise on the microphone here, and people were uh, getting bad at getting getting down on me. How am I going to get in here? Look at this, the green tape and the white tape. Now we're well, not going to be able to use this plastic again. Such a waste. waste. I won't be able to use any of this stuff again. Up against the wall. Oh, but it's open and we can steal stuff. Look at this. Here we go. We're not going to have to open the whole thing. Maybe we are. It's all been curled up and rolled up. Let me try and get him uncurled here. He shouldn't have done that, but what can I do? Somebody got a glimpse there. Tom1060 got a glimpse and says it's Hiroshige, which it indeed is. Tom's got it right. We have one, two, we have three prints from a set of eight. Do tell, it's a set of eight. And it's quite possible they're not in really great condition, but let's have a look. They are what they are. Oh, it's not going to fold back. Can't be helped. Okay, this is one dirty print. <laughs> Mr. Von Nani Neid Neidhart. I can never see it's just it's too Germanic for me. Neidhart. <laughs> the young man from Finland there. He knows what these are. Can you give us a talk about them, sir? <laughs> so this is a, a a reproduction edition of Omi Hakke. It's the Eight Views of Omi by Hiroshige. And this is a bunch of prints that were made, as far as I understand, they were made in late Meiji or early Taisho. And these are special prints. We've had some of these before on this stream. <coughs> are they woodbot prints? Yes. Are they carved woodbot prints? Yes. How are they printed? Partly by machine. These are mechanical woodblock prints. They've also been, uh, they're on, they're on a, a grotesque, funny kind of pulpy paper. And this is heavily, heavily foxed. I got these very cheaply and I paid 
as cheaply as I paid, as cheaply as I got them, I probably still paid too much because they're in dramatically terrible condition. They are, uh, we've talked about them before. The wood blocks are pretty much normal wood blocks. The key blocks are carved on cherry, the wood blocks are carved on probably cherry, could be a softer wood, we're really not sure. And when it comes time to print the thing, what happens is this, there's a, there's a press-like thing. The block goes on the table in front of the printer and they're probably standing up at a table. This is not your printer sitting at his printing bench. The block is there standing on the, uh, the guy's standing up. He's got a, a, a thing, a mechanical thing that pulls forward, shoo, 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 which is the brush unit. And we think, there's no photographs of this, but we think it's not like the normal shoe brush type thing that the normal printer uses to sweep around, sweep around, sweep around. The brush is on some kind of arm that pulls forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. And we don't know how the ink is applied. Maybe the ink was put on, you know, the, the block is here, the guy puts some blue, 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 the brush comes forward, chuk, 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 that out of the way. Then the paper goes on and then a platen comes down. And again, this is a scraper bar, kind of like we see when we're doing silkscreen printings. So they were printed in a mechanical type of press with a, a brush unit that runs always exactly straight back and forth, back and forth, back and forth across the block. And you can tell they're printed this way because one, they're on terrible crappy paper. Two, there is no uh, barren marks on the back. This has not been rubbed. It's not the kind of paper where the pigment goes deep into the paper. And every single color block, let's zoom in, you can see one. You can see the perfectly horizontal striations. The striations here are exactly horizontal across the paper. You never see any swirl, you never see diagonal lines, you never see anything except horizontal striations. You also see a buildup, what we call tamari. You'll see a buildup on one side of areas. The red was done here, so the red came on, the brush came bang, 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 and on the right hand side here, there is a pigment buildup, and on the left hand side, there is no pigment buildup. And of course, the brush came in from the back side, banged into it, left pigment on one edge. This happens to us too if we're not careful. You get the, the pigment buildup is called tamari. So these are hand carved, hand cut prints printed by a human being in a mechanical doodad. So I guess they are still woodblock prints. And they're actually sort of, when you get a nice one and good copy, they're kind of attractive. But they're considered absolute junk. The dealers won't touch them. Nobody's interested in them. How old is it? Mm, 100 years plus. If I was going to stick a date, I'd just say whatever, nine, mm, 1900 maybe? I don't know. No idea. Then the other question, I know what views are these? These are from the eight, oh, oh, look at this. Look at this, do you see the pattern here? Can you see the wood grain pattern? This is nashi moyo, nashi moyo. Do I have a piece of wood? No, I don't have any to show you. The particular pattern of wood grain that you see here, we really try and avoid it as much as possible. It comes from the particular way the piece of wood was sliced, and in Japanese it's called nashi moyo, and we hate it because it really comes out in the finished prints. And if you've got a C or something, well, for us, we would never, ever, ever try and use a piece of wood like that if we were printing. I don't know why nashi, nashi moyo. Nashi is the word for a Japanese pear, and it also means nashi, nothing. So I don't know the derivation of the word. It's a pear pattern, or I, I don't know, I'm sorry. I know nothing about the derivation. I just know the terminology. Anyway, eight views, which one is it? You can, you can read it, actually. You can read on this one. Someone says clearing weather. No, no, this is evening bell. And I don't see a temple here. The usual feeling is there's a temple off in the distance and we're supposed to be hearing the uh, sound of the temple bell. I don't hear that here. Let's move on. There's three of them.
they're not done badly, you know. <coughs> they're coming down nicely, this group. Tourists, they're back. They're back, look at them. Are those tourists? No, they look like school kids. No, not tourists. Sorry about that, not tourists. They're school kids and they, they're going to the public hall. I'm sure there's an event happening at the public hall. Are they a band? Why would they be carrying trolleys with stuff inside? They're school kids that will be headed to the public hall down the street. And here, there's your stripes. Look, here you are. If you didn't catch it before in the other color, you can catch it here. This is the deal, the color. All this, every color on these blocks has your banding stripes side to side, side to side. This is your dead giveaway for these prints. The theme on this one, this is, it's not sales, it's evening glow. Evening glow. But if I hadn't, if the wording wasn't there, I would have perhaps thought this was returning sales. But I guess we're, we're expected to take the glow in the sky as being more important than the sales. It tells us it's evening glow. But I would have guessed wrong. If I was guessing, I would have probably guessed returning sales. The prints are a little bit attractive. They're nice, you know. I mean, in, in their day, they were very, very popular. They really come up on auctions all the time. And Dave here has made a mistake with this. I don't have a set of these. It's really rare to see sets of these on Yahoo auctions, and it's really common to see one or a couple or a few of them. And the auctions have been coming in. There's two coming in auctions, so we get them. I really want the set. I don't just want two of them, so I throw them through to the flea market. What well, Nabisong puts them in and out they go. She sells these steadily on our flea market. But what I should have done is just kept one and kept another one and kept another one and built up my set bit by bit. But I've just been waiting for the day when a full set comes. And that's a bit silly because it's going to get expensive when it does. Again, more Nashi Moyo. Is that a castle town? I don't know. Is there a castle somewhere in Lake Bewa there? I don't remember. This is this is clearing weather. We have Hare, the, the, the kanji for Hare, uh, clear sky, clear blue sky. This is clearing weather. It never really caught on. There were some, we, this, this mechanical printing, we see it used like this for Hiroshige. There's a very common, they come in auctions all the time. Somebody published a version of the Hiroshige Tokaido in the Kyoka, what's called the Kyoka Tokaido. There's a version of it done with this mechanical printing. And they come up on auctions all the time, all the time. Anyway, these three are going through to Watanabe-san. She will maybe, Actually, I'm not really sure what she's going to do. She may think they're in pretty bad condition. This one's probably okay. That first one with the foxing, she may not put that in auction in our, in our flea market. We're a little bit leery about this. We want the Mokohankan flea market to be a place where people can buy stuff that's, yeah, that's really nice. I, got to Dave, I went to Dave's place. I can trust him. I got a really nice print at Dave's Mokohankan website. So we don't have sort of really, really bad stuff. So that first print that we saw here, the one that is really, really badly foxed, there's two ways to think about this. One way is to put it into our flea market really cheap, and the other one is not put it in because it's in such bad condition. I don't know what to do. I really, really don't know. It's easy to say, put it in and describe it well, take good pictures and say, this is absolute junk. But the problem is to put it in there to write the descriptions, to take six pictures, to do all this, that's going to take somebody an hour, hour and a half, couple of hours. It's going to cost me X thousands of yen in labor costs. It's going to cost me three to four thousand yen in labor costs to do this properly, plus what I paid for the print, and then I put a margin on it, and that means the price for the print would be six thousand yen, 
and it is not worth 6,000 yen because it's tattered and it's, it's foxed. So I'm in a bit of a paradox. I can't really put these online because it takes too much. It's, the cost is too high. So what we're thinking of doing is this. We can prepare this in 10 minutes for the shop. Take it out of this folder, put it in a clear file, throw it in the shop, put a price sticker on, 2,000 yen, bang. Someone's going to be happy. And it doesn't take us any preparation time. We don't need to carefully explain, beware, this item is not high quality goods, etc., etc., etc. So there's lots of ways to do this. You know, I really don't know. So I don't think you're going to be seeing this in the flea market because it just, there's just no way to make it work. Okay, it's 31, and I have got to boot up this shop. Teiko-san, the young lady who is our new shop manager, should be here any minute. Uh, she's booked to start. Oh, good morning. Sorry, some hello. She's booked to start. Uh, we have a new full-time employee, Teiko-san, and she'll be coming this morning. She'll be running the shop, and hopefully I can get upstairs. But right now, it's time for me to get out of here. I'll see you again in three more days, Thursday morning for me, Wednesday evening for most of you guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks for the mods. Corn sound. Thanks for the new, uh, thanks for the new, what do you call it? The new bot command. What was it? Am I going to learn this? Time. Look at this. 9.32. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Thank you very much. See you in a few days. Bye for now.